Good morning. Welcome to Holy Mass on the first Sunday in Lent at St. Mary of the Annunciation, New Albany, Indiana. This Mass is being offered with love for Will Block. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each of you. Spirit. Now, during Lent, we're doing things a little bit differently. Um, now, we, I would invite you all to kneel, and we'll have the, the penitential rite. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, that through the yearly observances of Holy Lent, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you, all the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, this is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. 
when I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again bring a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteousness for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it, he also went to preach to the spirits in prison who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Does not 
not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes forth from the mouth of God. Glory to you, O word of God. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The Spirit drove Jesus into the desert, and he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. I was recently talking to a co-worker, and with sadness, I found out that he had left the Catholic Church. He was telling me that he felt like the church was a little too overboard by asking people to do specific things, especially during Lent, and a few other things that he mentioned. I explained to him that it, this time is about reflecting what's going on in our lives. and how this, through this reflection, we should get closer to Christ. And it is he, when we allow him to do things in our hearts, it is he who moves us to do the specific things that we do. So Lent is not about putting ashes on our foreheads. Stop eating meal, meats fasting on Fridays, or about giving up something. This, these are all wrong, wrong if we are not doing them with good intentions or with a purpose. Lent is a time to reflect on the love of the Father and to allow His Spirit to lead us and help us reject the temptations to sins that are embedded in our hearts. The sins that prevent other people from seeing Christ in us. We have two great examples today of, of hope that show us how to trust and do the will of God the Father. As we heard in the first reading, Noah and his family did God's will. And by building the ark and putting animals in it, he went on with the task. They left their homes, friends, in a life of comfort by listening to God. The waters rise, the ark was rocketing, and the people and the animals inside were anxious and anxious of not knowing how long this was going to last or wondering if it was going to get any worse. Perhaps they were running out of food and thought about killing some of the animals. I imagine the ark was a great chaos. 
But there was nothing Noah and his family could do. They had to learn how to rely and trust in God's mercy. After 40 days, everything was calmed and God spoke to Noah and his sons. He established a covenant with them and their descendants. The gospel tells us that the Spirit drove Jesus into the desert and Jesus remained there for 40 days and was tempted by Satan. And like Noah, Jesus was also with wild and tame animals. Jesus was not the exception to temptation, but is the only one who has conquered sin over sin. He came down from the desert announcing the king, kingdom of God is at hand to repent and believe in the gospel. And that is how we entered into land, by listening to these words, repent and believe in the gospel, in marking our heads with a cross, which reminds us of our sinful nature. During the Lent, we, we should learn to allow the Spirit to guide our lives. This is what Jesus did. He allowed the Spirit to drive him into the desert. We get our guards to fight our own temptations by seeking for the Lord in prayer when we read sacred scripture, by serving others when we give alms, and by, by practicing self-control when we fast. The purpose is to cut out all the things that separate us from God. We get rid of the destructions in our lives. And in this sermon, we recognize God's love. This would be a help for us to beat our own, own temptations and desires. And like Christ, humble our hearts and see that our struggles may not be that bad after all. When we complain about those things that we want, for example, the house that we want to have, the food that we are about to eat, or just how cold it is outside, in solidarity, we think about those people who have no food, no water, no electricity, or a warm place to spend the night. Better yet, we will keep in mind the people in our communities who have lost their jobs, that are homeless and depressed or ill. My sisters and brothers, let us remember that we are one large family and we must help each other out. This Lent, let us allow the Spirit to help us get rid of pride, envy, greed, and be able to recognize the blessings God has poured out onto our lives. In this, in these difficult times, and share these gifts with others. Jesus put his trust in the love to the Father and his love took him to do the Father's will. As we heard St. Peter say in the second reading, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. So let us allow Christ to lead us to our God to lead our lives so we can take us, so he can take us closer to our Father. And at the end, enjoy that love of the Father so that we are able to bring that love to the rest of the people, especially those who do not know God.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, glorified, who is spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead in the life of the world to come. Amen. With confidence, we lift our prayers to God. That these 40 days in the Lenten desert may increase our strength for the church's mission of proclaiming the good news. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who serve in state and local governments, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in working to protect the most vulnerable, especially the unborn. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those suffering in mind, body, or spirit, may this Lenten season bring them closer to the Lord and console them and provide for their needs. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all who are ill with the coronavirus be healed. For the frontline workers, may they remain healthy and not grow weary. For availability and success of the vaccine to rid us of this pandemic. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our community, that we may be thankful for the gifts we have and realize that by sharing them with others, we are sharing them with Christ himself. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they soon rejoice with all the angels and saints in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Father of God, you send your Son to be light for the world. Hear our prayers for the needs of our world through Christ our Lord.
blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we receive the bread we offer you. Through the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. For through your goodness, we receive the wine we offer you. Through the divine work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink. brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time of Lent through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, by abstaining 40 long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that, celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. So with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of hosts, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord. And from the world's beginning, you are always at work so that the human race may become holy, just as you yourself are holy. Look, we pray, upon your people's offerings and pour out on them the power of your Spirit, so that they may become the body and blood of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, in whom we too are your sons and daughters. Though once we were lost and could not approach you, you loved us with the greatest love. For your Son, who alone is just, handed himself over to death and did not disdain to be nailed for our sake to the wood of the cross. But before his arms were outstretched between heaven and earth to become the lasting sign of your covenant, he desired to celebrate the Passover with his disciples. As he ate with them, he took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to them, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. My Lord and my God. In a similar way, when supper was ended, knowing that he was about to reconcile all things in himself through his blood to be shed on a cross, he took the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, and once more giving you thanks, he handed a chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. My Lord and my God.
the mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection, you have set us free. As we celebrate the memorial of your Son, Jesus Christ, who is our Passover and our surest peace, we celebrate his death and resurrection from the dead in looking forward to his blessed coming. We offer you, Father, who are, who are merciful, faithful and merciful God, this sacrificial victim who reconciles to you the human race. Look kindly, most compassionate Father, on those you unite to yourself by the sacrifice of your Son, and granted by the power of the Holy Spirit, as we partake of the one bread and the one chalice, we may be gathered into one body in Christ, who heals every division. Be pleased to keep us always in communion of mind and heart, together with Francis, our Pope, and Charles, our Bishop. Help us to work together for the coming of your kingdom until the hour when we stand before you, saints among the saints, in the halls of heaven, with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints, and with our deceased brothers and sisters, whom we humbly commend to your mercy. Then, freed at last from the wound of corruption and made fully into a new creation, we shall sing to you with gladness the thanksgiving of Christ, who lives for all eternity. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. We join together with Jesus in the prayer of the sons and daughters of God. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, we pray, O Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant us peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. From the distance, let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, 
I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. It's good to see some people back who've, who've not been here at church for a long, long time. But we know that there's so many brothers and sisters who cannot be with us. Um, and so we pray for them and with them the act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are in the Blessed Sacrament. I love you above all things, and I long for you in my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, Come spiritually into my heart. I embrace you and unite myself entirely to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And for those who have not been here for a long, long time, you don't have to come up. There's no communion line anymore, at least now, not during the, the pandemic. And so Deacon Martin and our Eucharistic ministers will take Jesus to you. And if you are standing and have your hand outstretched, they will know that you are ready to receive the body of Christ. So they will place the, the body of Christ in your, in your hand. And then after they pass by, if you would lower your mask and then consume the body of Jesus. And if there's anyone who has a strong desire to receive communion on the tongue, at the end of Mass, Deacon Martin will give you Holy Communion.
Let us pray. Renewed with heavenly bread, by which faith is nourished, hope increased, and charity strengthened, we pray, O Lord, that we may learn to hunger for Christ, the true and living bread, and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth, through Christ our Lord. We have a few announcements. During the time of Lent, every, every Wednesday evening from 6.30 to 7.30, we have confessions here in church as an additional time to given the, the possibility of, of going to confession more conveniently. And if there's people still here at 7.30, and so we'll wait until, until, that, until, until they finished. And then every Friday during Lent, um, at, after the 12.05 Mass, we have Stations of the Cross, and we meditate them here in church with everybody staying in their particular pew. Next Sunday, our Parish Social Justice Committee will be hosting the American Red Cross for our community blood drive. Call the parish office if you would like to make an appointment, or you can also sign up at Red Cross blood.org and it just is just so good to see they have some people back in church so I haven't seen them so long and so you know when we don't see people for a while we say oh I hope they're okay <laughs> it is so good to, it's good to, it's good to be back together again may the Lord be with you Bow your heads for God's blessing. May bountiful blessing, O Lord, come down upon your people, that hope may grow in tribulation, virtue be strengthened in temptation, and eternal redemption be assured through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. Thanks be to God. And please wait for the ushers to come around and help you. They will do so uh, once the uh, hymn is finished. Thank you and have a good week. Uh -huh.